Anyone else have a question for Alana? Please raise your hand, but we'll go to John Lupo. Go ahead, John. Well, first of all, Alana, happy birthday. <laughs> thank you. You as well. Um, thank you. Uh, just, I know that there's a lot of younger players on this team that are 25 years or younger. So what's the, uh, excuse me, what have you been most impressed with? How has this team grown in, in the time that the whole group of younger players have been with each other? What are you most looking forward to seeing out of this young group? I think yeah, one of the biggest things coming into this environment um, is kind of realizing and learning what the standard is uh, on and off the field, you know, and everything that we do, upholding, uh, you know, the decorum and, and level of excellence that's expected here and that we need to succeed. So I think um, the older players that we've had in camp have done a really good job in kind of bringing everyone together and kind of bringing everyone up to that standard. And I think uh, now it's just on us to continue, you know, kind of getting to that level and pushing that level as high as we can. So. Um, yeah, from that standpoint, I think that's been the most exciting, and I think that's been you know one of the challenges that all the younger players face when we come in. Thank you, sir. Let's go to Steph Young. Go ahead, Steph. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, I wanted to ask about obviously Blacko has mentioned he's trying to see a lot of players and evaluate a lot of players in the last game. You know, we had some midfield changes, and just from your perspective, what the work is like in trying to maintain consistency in the build out and then on the defensive end when you're you know switching out midfielders you're going from you know Andy Sullivan to Jalen Howell and just what the work like there is for you guys yeah I think the more we get to play together the more we obviously learn each other's tendencies uh, you know learn what each individual player's strengths are um, you know I think the important part is that we're all locked in and keyed into kind of the general framework that we have and then you know you're dropping players in and out and it's just uh, how do we best utilize their strength within, you know, the, the group scheme? So, uh, you know, everyone's kind of on the same page. Everyone's working off the same roadmap, and then it's kind of we let everyone's individual talents take over once they're, you know, in that position. Um, but, yeah, it's just kind of getting to know those relationships, getting to know those partnerships, and the more we get to do that, I think the better it'll get. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Steph. I think it's worth noting that Alana is the first defender since 2019 to get two assists in a game. Both came for her, with her head. Um, the last person to do it was Tiana Davidson, her best buddy, <laughs> who we send our best to as she recovers from her surgery. So let's go to Jonathan Tannewald. Go ahead, Jonathan. Thank you, Aaron, and uh, thanks a lot for the time. Uh, just you know, wondering if any of your old friends and colleagues from Pennington are going to be there tomorrow night, or family or friends or whatnot, since it, I. This might be your first cap in this neck of the woods, I think. I think so, yeah. Uh, definitely my parents will be there. Um, I haven't heard from anyone else, but you know, hopefully they'll get to make it or get to see it on TV. Um, it's obviously great kind of getting to be somewhat close to home. Um, I was laughing when we were driving from the airport to the hotel. I was like, oh, it's finally nice to like, be in camp and kind of recognize the surroundings and you know, be somewhere that I kind of have a general idea where we're at. So uh, yeah, hopefully you know, get some people who I know to come to the game. Mm -hmm. You know, you've seen enough U.S. games in this part of the country. You know that there's the, a massive fan base for this team mm -hmm. over here. You know, what do you think they're going to see tomorrow night in an era of players who not all of them have gotten to see in person? Uh, sorry, I think you cut out a little bit. What was the question? All right. Now, you know, the, the U.S. women haven't played in the, you know, Philly area in a little while. I know they played in Connecticut last summer before the Olympics. But, you know, what do you think this 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 – part of the country is going to get to see tomorrow night a bunch of players who they haven't gotten to watch in person yet. yeah I think um you know similar to the first match we're going to you know try to put out our best performance um obviously that means you know we want to score as many goals as possible and be as airtight on defense um so as you know as I mentioned earlier I hope you know we want everyone to be able to show their individual individual talents you know what makes them special so um yeah it's kind of our hope that you know we can play within our framework and let everyone shine uh, thank you much I will get out of the way for the Stanford folks Lance, how far are we from your home? home uh, it's about an hour and a half. Hour and a half, not bad. Uh, let's go. Let's go to. Oh, I see what you meant by uh, Stanford. Julie Saudi, go ahead. <laughs> Get out of the way, JT. <laughs> um, <clears throat> hi, Lana. Good to see you. Thanks for doing this on your birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Um, my question to you is, uh, as Hype noted, two assists in the last game, and Vlatko mentioned in the post-game presser that, um, you know, he's been challenging you all to make a difference on set pieces. And I know also things we've talked about 
uh, before is uh, challenging you to uh, also think more offensively in terms of setting play from your center back position. So with those two things in mind, what is your approach to games and how has that evolved wearing the red, white, and blue, you think, in, in terms of confidence and mindset? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I'm pretty duty driven. So obviously Vlatko gave us that task and, you know, I think we all as much as possible wanted to achieve that. And we talked about it right before the game to kind of remind ourselves that that was our goal, um, scoring off the set pieces. So I think for me, you know, given those objectives, I've definitely, you know, started to watch, watch a lot more film and kind of be a lot more critical about the ways I could get better in those areas. Um, as you said, you know, being more offensive minded, setting play and um, on set pieces as well. You know, I think with my height and size, it, it's always an opportunity for me to kind of help on the offense and, you know, hopefully score or set other people up to score. So um, it's something that I've paid a lot more attention to, something that I've kind of, you know, worked on my mindset to be in the, in the right positions, set other people up to be in the right positions, kind of raise the intensity there. In, in terms of working on your mindset, what does that look like? Give me a little more context. Uh, you know, I think it's uh, when you think of forwards, you know, I think they have that natural drive to score. I think I've, I've just always thought more defensively. So, I, you know, get in front of goal and obviously love to score. Uh, but kind of working on that hunger to, to get a goal and, you know, help the team in that way, I think is something that's evolved, you know, as my time is over my time as a pro. Got it. Great. Thank you. I think we should note Alana's one of the few players on our team that scored in the Champions League. Good job, Alana. Thanks, I've. That's correct, right? You did. Mm -hmm. you did yeah. um, let's go to Tim Furlong from local NBC affiliate here in Philly. Go ahead, Tim. Hi, Alana. I don't know what you've heard from Carly Lloyd, but what have you heard about soccer fans in our area? I know you kind of grew up near here, but uh, what, what are you hearing in, in your reaction to just playing locally here? Uh, you know, I think most of the cities we go to, you know, you always hear great things about the fans. Um, I think we're very fortunate to have the support all across the U.S. and internationally when we travel. Um, but, you know, I definitely do think uh, the East Coast and Philly especially brings out a, you know, a rowdy, supportive group. So I think we're all really excited to play uh, at this stadium and, you know, see what the fans bring. We're trying hard to get the World Cup here. I know Boston is trying to get the World Cup in New York and everybody, this whole East Coast corridor. How important do you think it is for fans to come out and really show your love of soccer at these kind of events? Yeah, I think that, you know, the more fans come and support us, obviously, you know, that the stronger that claim is that, you know, we want to host a World Cup, that it'll be well supported here. Um, and I think it goes both ways. It's on us to put out a performance that the fans deserve and that the fans want to see and come to support. So, uh, you know, hopefully we, we both can work in tandem to, uh, you know, raise the level of that claim and kind of bring the bring the World Cup here. Beautiful. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Let's go to Jen Hildreth. We'll be on the call tomorrow for ESPN. Go ahead, Jen. Thank you so much. Hey, Alana. Um, I'm curious, looking back now, a bit over a year that since your first cap, a year to two months, um, you have always seemed very composed back to your days at Stanford watching you play. But I'm wondering maybe how you feel different now than you did if you think back where you were in this part of your journey a year ago. And, and you talked about your growth and your evolution. So how, how do you feel different now versus then, would you say? Um, yeah, I think I try to, you know, maintain that level of composure and, and calmness throughout. Um, so I don't, I don't think that's really changed. Um, I think, you know, one thing that's different now is when I got my first cap was kind of being dropped in around quite a few veteran players. Um, and obviously now we've, we've got a little more youth in the lineup. So I think my role has kind of evolved more from, I think, just, you know, kind of dropping in and, and doing my role as best as possible to now kind of trying to be more of a leader, trying to help others do their role. And um, that's something I've really worked on is trying to learn the roles of others around me so I can help them and, you know, not just be as focused on myself. So uh, I think that would just be the biggest change over the, the year and a half. And how do you think the NWSL has been able to help you with your time now coming up here? Obviously, each place that you stop on your journey probably shapes you in some way. How is your time getting to play domestically, do you think? Has that helped you to this point? Playing in the NWSL has definitely been, you know, a massive help in my development, I think. Um, the intensity of every game is is crucial to getting better. Um, you know, I've gotten to face a different challenge every single matchup, every single game. Um, you know, whether that's going against fellow national team opponents um, or just other players in the league, I think you always face something really difficult every weekend, and there's always been something for me to go back and, and watch the film or talk to my coaches, talk to my teammates, and learn after. So um, I think I've grown massively in the time that I've been back in the U.S. playing.